Hi, what's up? This is Václav. It's probably no surprise for you that I believe that Home Assistant is the most powerful platform for home automation. The two things I like the most about that is, first, it supports virtually all home automation brands. So you have the freedom to use and combine different devices and not to be locked within one vendor. And the second thing is uh, that it is flexible. Many things works out of the box, but if you want them to work differently, you can always change it to do exactly what you want. Now, this video is not about the second thing, and that's all of my other videos. Today, I will show you that Home Assistant is actually the easiest way to automate your home. You just open your browser, go to the Home Assistant website, scroll down for Home Assistant Yellow, and there say Order Now. I'm in Europe, so I'm gonna select the European website that is in Denmark. There are three options available, but I'm going for the plug and play experience. So I'm gonna select the standard, which comes with the Home Assistant pre-flashed. And I'm going to choose not to have any SSD because I really don't want to install anything. I'm gonna add it to my cart, select the shipping process, check out, enter your billing details, payment options, and then finish the purchase. When it arrives, take it out of the box, Plug in the Ethernet cable and the power adapter. Then, wait a moment, how long it'll depend on your internet connection. Then open the browser, go to homeassistant.local8123 and it will open the first Home Assistant screen. It'll ask you to either create a new account or you can also restore it from existing backup. But we are creating a new one, so I'm gonna enter a new username and choose a password and say, create account. Then you configure your home location. That's useful for things like determining the time of the sunrise or sunset. Configure your country and language, select a time zone, and then you can choose between metric and imperial system. Then you can configure the privacy settings. I leave them turned off for now. Then it already discovered some devices on our network, so we can either configure them now or leave that for later. So I'll finish in here and it will automatically configure a default dashboard for me. There are some notifications, so let's check them out. And it says it discovered some new devices. So let's check them out. And there are three devices uh, discovered, so we can configure them and add them to our home assistant. And that's really it. Now, the standard comes with 16 gigs of storage on board. It's enough to run the Home Assistant, but if you want to save more history or perhaps the recordings from the security cameras, it might be a good idea to purchase some additional storage. If you do that, it won't come installed, so we'll have to install it ourselves. So we have to unscrew the four screws from the bottom of the box, open it, then take the SSD from the box, there's a screw that holds the SSD, so you need to unscrew it first. Then slide the disk into the slot in sort of a 45 degrees angle, and then push it down and secure it with the screw. And that's it. Not difficult after all. The other two options are the kit versions. Uh, one is coming with the power adapter and one is powered over the Ethernet. Those ones do not come with the Raspberry Pi compute module, so we have to purchase this one separately. That would probably make sense if you want to buy a more powerful module, but right now there is uh, only the module with the uh, two gigs of RAM available, so this is essentially the same one as the standard, so that wouldn't make much sense. But due to the current situation with the microchips, the standard version might not be available, so it might be the only option we might be left with. But if you do that, we have to install the compute module. It's not a rocket science, uh, you can just plug it in, but it's a little bit more difficult than the SSD disk. So you just align it uh, with the connectors and push it down until it clicks. Then we need to uh, stick the thermal pads and finally place the heatsink on top of that. It just held with two plastic thingies. Finally, the third option is with the power Ethernet. If you don't know what it is, then you don't need it. Uh, that one offers a fallback power supply for the backup. And that's it. And this is actually what I would recommend to my friends. 
that want to just start with home automation. It is so easy. And then they can either use it like that or take it from there. I bought a Home Assistant Yellow myself. Well, partly to shoot this video, but also that I have a test environment to play with. And I quite like it. I'm actually thinking to use it as my primary solution. I guess it uses a bit less energy than my Intel Nook. Well, we'll see about that. And how about you? Do you like it? Uh, let me know. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.